We continue today with chapter 25, The Justice of God. Introduction The Christ in you inhabits not a body, yet he is in you, and thus it must be that you are not within a body. What is within you cannot be outside, and it is certain that you cannot be apart from what is at the very center of your life. What gives you life cannot be housed in death. No more can you. Christ is within a frame of holiness whose only purpose is that he may be made manifest to those who know him not, that he may call to them to come to him and see him where they thought their bodies were. Then where their bodies melt away, that they may frame his holiness in them. No one who carries Christ in him can fail to recognize him everywhere, except in bodies. And as long as he believes he is in a body, where he thinks he is, he cannot be. And so he carries him unknowingly, and does not make him manifest. And thus he does not recognize him where he is. The Son of Man is not the risen Christ. Yet does the Son of God abide exactly where he is, and walks with him within his holiness as plain to see as is his specialness set forth within his body. The body needs no healing, but the mind that thinks it is a body is sick indeed, and it is here that Christ sets forth the remedy. His purpose folds the body in his light and fills it with the holiness that shines from him. And nothing that the body says or does but makes him manifest. To those who know him not, it carries him in gentleness and love to heal their minds. Such is the mission that your brother has for you, and such it must be that your mission is for him. The Link to Truth it cannot be that it is hard to do the task that Christ appointed you to do, since it is He who does it. And in the doing of it will you learn the body merely seems to be the means to do it. For the mind is His, and so it must be yours. His holiness directs the body through the mind at one with Him. And you are manifest unto your holy brother, as He to you. Here is the meeting of the Holy Christ unto himself, nor any difference is perceived to stand between the aspects of his holiness, which meet and join and raise him to his Father, whole and pure and worthy of his everlasting love. How can you manifest the Christ in you except to look on holiness and see him there? Perception tells you, you are manifest in what you see. Behold the body, and you will believe that you are there. And everybody that you look upon reminds you of yourself, your sinfulness, your evil, and above all your death. And would you not despise the one who tells you this and seek his death instead? The message and the messenger are one. And you must see your brother as yourself. Framed in his body, you will see your sinfulness, wherein you stand condemned. Set in his holiness, the Christ in him proclaims himself as you. Perception is a choice of what you want yourself to be, the world you want to live in, and the state in which you think your mind will be content and satisfied. It chooses where you think your safety lies, at your decision. It reveals yourself to you as you would have you be, and always is it faithful to your purpose, from which it never separates, nor gives the slightest witness unto anything the purpose in your mind upholdeth not. Perception is a part of what is your purpose to behold, for means and end are never separate, 
and thus you learn what seems to have a life apart has none. You are the means for God, not separate nor with a life apart from His. His life is manifest in you who are His Son. Each aspect of Himself is framed in holiness and perfect purity, in love celestial, and so complete it wishes only that it may release all that it looks upon unto itself. Its radiance shines through each body that it looks upon, and brushes all its darkness into light by merely looking past it to the light. The veil is lifted through its gentleness, and nothing hides the face of Christ from its beholders. You and your brother stand before him now, to let him draw aside the veil that seems to keep you separate and apart. Since you believe that you are separate, heaven presents itself to you as separate too. Not that it is in truth, but that the link that has been given you to join the truth may reach to you through what you understand. Father and Son and Holy Spirit are as one, as all your brothers join as one in truth. Christ and his Father never have been separate, and Christ abides within your understanding, in the part of you that shares his Father's will. The Holy Spirit links the other part, the tiny mad idea, desire, to be separate, different, and special, to the Christ, to make the oneness clear to what is really one. In this world, this is not understood, but can be taught. The Holy Spirit serves Christ's purpose in your mind, so that the aim of specialness can be corrected where the error lies. Because his purpose still is one with both the Father and the Son, he knows the will of God and what you really will. But this is understood by mind perceived as one, aware that it is one, and so experienced. It is the Holy Spirit's function to teach you how this oneness is experienced, what you must do that it can be experienced, and where you should go to do it. All this takes note of time and place as if they were discreet, for while you think that part of you is separate, the concept of a oneness joined as one is meaningless. It is apparent that a mind so split could never be the teacher of a oneness which unites all things within itself. And so what is within this mind, and does unite all things together, must be its teacher. Yet must it use the language that this mind can understand, in the condition in which it thinks it is. And it must use all learning to transfer illusions to the truth, taking all false ideas of what you are, and leading you beyond them to the truth that is beyond them. All this can very simply be reduced to this. What is the same cannot be different, and what is one cannot have separate parts. And from the workbook, Lesson 191, I am the Holy Son of God Himself. Here is your declaration of release from bondage of the world. And here as well is all the world released. You do not see what you have done by giving to the world the role of jailer to the Son of God. What could it be but vicious and afraid, fearful of shadows, punitive and wild, lacking all reason, blind, insane with hate? What you have done, that this should be your world? What have you done, that is this? is what you see. Deny your own identity, and this is what remains. You look on chaos and proclaim it is yourself. There is no sight that fails to witness this to you. There is no sound that does not speak of frailty within you and without. No breath you draw that does not seem to bring you nearer death. No hope you hold, but will dissolve in tears. Deny your own identity, and you will not escape the madness 
which induce this weird, unnatural, and ghostly thought that mocks creation and that laughs at God. Deny your own identity and you assail the universe alone, without a friend, a tiny particle of dust against the legions of your enemies. Deny your own identity and look on evil, sin, and death and watch despair snatch from your fingers every scrap of hope, leaving you nothing but the wish to die. Yet what is it except a game you play with in an identity can be denied? You are as God created you. All else but this one thing is folly to believe, and this one thought is everyone set free. In this one truth are all illusions gone. In this one fact is sinlessness proclaimed to be forever part of everything, the central core of its existence and its guarantee of immortality. But let today's idea find a place among your thoughts, and you have risen far above the world and all the worldly thoughts that hold it prisoner. And from this place of safety and escape, you will return and set it free. For he who can accept his true identity is truly saved. And his salvation is the gift he gives to everyone in gratitude to him who pointed out the way to happiness that changed his whole perspective of the world. One holy thought like this, and you are free. You are the Holy Son of God Himself. And with this holy thought you learn as well that you have freed the world. You have no need to use it cruelly and then perceive this savage need in it. You set it free of your imprisonment. You will not see a devastating image of yourself walking the world in terror, with the world twisting in agony because of your fears have been laid the mark of death upon its heart. Be glad today how very easily is hell undone. You need but tell yourself, I am the Holy Son of God Himself. I cannot suffer, cannot be in pain, I cannot suffer loss, nor fail to do all that salvation asks. And in that thought is everything you look on wholly changed. A miracle has lighted up all dark and ancient caverns where the rites of death echoed since time began. For time has lost its hold upon the world. The Son of God has come in glory to redeem the lost, to save the helpless, and to give the world the gift of His forgiveness. Who could see the world as dark and sinful when God's Son has come again at last to set it free? You who perceive yourself as weak and frail, with futile hopes and devastated dreams, born but to die, to weep and suffer pain, hear this. All power is given unto you in earth and heaven. There is nothing that you cannot do. You play the game of death, of being helpless, pitifully tied to disillusion, in a world which shows no mercy to you. Yet when you accord it mercy, will its mercy shine on you. Then let the Son of God awaken from his sleep, and opening his holy eyes, return again to bless the world he made. In error it began, but it will end in the reflection of his holiness. And he will sleep no more and dream of death, then join with me today. Your glory is the light that saves the world. Do not withhold salvation longer. Look about the world and see the suffering there. Is not your heart willing to bring your weary brothers rest? They must await your own release. They stay in chains till you are free. They cannot see the mercy of the world until you find it in yourself. They suffer pain until you have denied its hold on you. They die till you accept your own eternal life. 
You are the Holy Son of God Himself. Remember this, and all the world is free. Remember this, and earth and heaven are one. Amen.